Joining me another episode of Beating Cancer Today, the podcast where hope meets action. I'm your host, Kevin Hennings, a stage four colorectal cancer survivor. Against all odds, I defied the doctor's predictions and took my health into my own. Now, I'm here to share my journey and alternative methods that help me. But it's not just about my story. It's about yours, too. Join me as we navigate through the challenges of cancer together, providing support, insights, and empowerment. Together, we'll beat cancer, one episode at a time. Oh, let me hear the war cry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of the Warrior Wednesday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys continue the dialogue on social media platforms. It, thank you for sharing all these videos. It's really incredible. Please remember to share, like, subscribe, um, and also check out our social media platforms. Uh, we're just we're on just about every single one of them right now. Uh, we just signed on with uh, uh, Brighteon.com. That's a really good one, um, I, and we're streaming really good there. And no no censorship, no nothing. So I'm excited about our relationship with them. And BeatingCancerToday.com is also coming up um, out of construction and we are streaming live on there also and offshore service, baby, no censorship. So <laughs> folks, my all time disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. Um, just, uh, I never went to school for any of this stuff. I'm, <laughs> I'm a recent graduate of the school of hard knocks with a master's degree in common sense and uh doctorate degree in logic. So I'm just, listen, I'm just a United States Marine. I was diagnosed with stage four colorectal cancer. And after a few years of Western medicine, I exhausted all the options. I, I reached my lifetime max of chemo, surgical options, radiation. I, it was all exhausted. And I was referred to hospice. Um, I ended up finding a solution through repurposed medicine. And that repurposed medicine was fenbendazole, which is uh, antiparasitic, uh, semitidine, which is actually the active ingredient of tagamine. Uh, Cucurmin, which anybody with cancer knows that that's an anti-inflammatory. They're all prob probably familiar with that. AHCC is active hexose correlated compound. It's a collection of mushrooms. And um, a, uh, annatto is the fifth ingredient. Annatto is pretty much the, the, the most valuable part to me of the vitamin E. It complements the fenbendazole, and it's a great part uh, of the cocktail when it's all taken in concert. Uh, so I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but she is. Oh, Dr. J is a chiropractor. She specializes in functional medicine, which I can't wait to dive into that. Uh, she's the originator of holistic kinesiology and also holistic methylation, which we're going to dive into that stuff here in a second. She's the CEO of My Happy Genes, which we're going to talk all about. She's here to get us going. She's excited. And she's, I, I just love the way she thinks. And she is Dr. Jay Dunn. Hey, 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 Dr. Jay, how you doing? You got me revved up there. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you know what? You have a completely, I'm trying, I'm trying to think more three-dimensionally. <laughs> and in my life, no, I mean, I'm serious. I, I try to, you know, you go through your entire adult life as, as sheep, you know, you, you follow things, whatever. And then there's an awakening. Yeah. And I was thinking one dimensionally my whole entire life, mm -hmm. my whole adult life. I was just, you know, so now I am getting exposed to things that I never thought would it, I mean, I'm taking horse medicine for Christ's sakes. I mean, it's just insane. The things that are out there that are working. And then I dive into uh, the, the third dimensional thought process, like what you have. Can you introduce yourself, please? Just take this. Yeah. 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 I love it. I love it that you've made that sort of breakthrough to, to understanding that there's more out there, at least in the healthcare field than we had any idea. And I was like you, you know, I was raised in the medical model and I thought they had all the answers. And when I got sick in my early twenties, I went back to that model and uh, they, I had like massive headaches and nausea and fatigue. And um, I just didn't understand what was happening with my body. And when I went back and they did all this blood work, they said, you're, you're fine. Here's a prescription for headaches. Yeah. And I went, what? 
wait, you're, you're covering up a symptom. You're not even looking at what, where maybe it came from. Cause it wasn't here a year ago. It, you know, it has to have come from somewhere. And so I didn't know where to go. And I started looking at, well, maybe it's my diet. Maybe McDonald's hamburgers aren't, aren't the best diet and maybe I should cut out the Cokes and whatever. <laughs> So I was working in bookstores and I started reading everything I could get my hands on that had to do with natural healing or diets. And uh, it was confusing because there are so many different ideas about what is the correct diet. You know, whether it's a vegan diet, it's a keto diet, it's an all meat diet, it's omnivore. It's, you know, it's just so many choices and everybody. What, thinks, what do you trust? What do you I trust? You, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So I would try everything. And um I actually got, you know, I, I tried, okay, maybe I need to eat some more vegetables and nuts and seeds and all of that. And it actually made me worse. I felt worse when I did that. I was like, well, wait, you know, pretty much everybody agrees that you ought to eat more vegetables. And why does this make me worse? And so I thought, well, maybe I need to take supplements. So I went to the supplement store and, and looked around and it was like, so many choices. How do I pick? You know, where where do you start with that? And I talked to a lady there and she said, you know, have you ever tried chiropractic? And I was like, chiropractic, what does that have to do with nausea and headaches and fatigue? And she said, well, you'd be surprised what chiropractors can do. And I was like, okay, I'm in. And went to a chiropractor. He adjusted me. Didn't change anything. It didn't help at all. I was like, okay, check that one off. And I, then I talked to another friend of mine and he said, you ought to go to my chiropractor. He's a little different. He does some real different stuff. And I was like, okay, I'll try. And so I went to this chiropractor and he's got my arm up in the air and he's pushing on it. And I was like, oh, this is weird. What's going on here? And uh, he said, I'm a kinesiologist and we're getting feedback from your body through your nervous system. And I was like, okay, whatever, if, it, if I'm willing to try it, you know? And so within 10 minutes, he told me exactly what was going on in my body and why my headaches were there and how to change my diet for me. Uh, and what supplements to take for me, you know, he could test it through the nervous system using uh, kinesiology. And I was like, okay, that was the weirdest thing I've ever had done, but I'm, I'm in. And I did everything to a T and within a week I was a whole new human being. And I was like, okay, that, what was that? <laughs> what, wow. what was that weird thing. And so I, I kept going back and I got better and better. And I thought, I want to do this. I want to learn this. And so I started to study kinesiology was way before I became a doctor. I was doing something called touch for health, which is sort of like musculoskeletal oriented. We're looking at, you know, where, where muscles are weak and where we might, might have dysfunction in our, in our physical body. And um, then I studied behavioral kinesiology, which was more about brain integration. And uh, then I studied uh, educational kinesiology, which is more about how we work, learn. And I was like, they all have a little piece of the puzzle, but I, I want the whole thing. And so I found this great technique called kinesionics where I studied and it included everything. That's, that's musculoskeletal system. That's biochemistry or nutrition. That's um, brain chemistry. That's emotion. That's, you know, lifestyle, everything. It was like a model for evaluating everything that can go on in our bodies. And uh, I thought, okay, this is great. And I studied that, got certified, and I started working on people. And um, I remember one of the first patients I worked on was sent to me by my chiropractor who had done the kinesiology. He couldn't get anywhere with her. He said, why don't you, you see what you can do? Funny enough, she had parasites. She had like massive amount of parasites and she was so skinny and so emaciated, hadn't been able to go to the bathroom by herself in years, she always had to have like an enema or, or whatever to get going. And, um, you know, she just was living with her parents. She couldn't work. It was, it was bad. And she was young. She was pretty young. So she came in, I tested her and I was like, yeah, for sure. Parasites here, this remedy. And, you know, with, with the muscle testing, we can determine like where, what parasite, what remedy to take specifically for them. You know, it takes the guesswork out of it because there's a lot of parasite remedies, right? And uh, within a week, she called me back and she said, oh, my gosh, she said, I just went to the bathroom by myself for the first time in years. And she's crying. She's like, it's I feel like I'm getting my life back, you know, getting getting." Broke. And I was like, yes, this is this is what I want to do. <laughs> there you go. Come on, Dr. J. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. This is what I want to hear. I want to hear people say I'm better. Thank you. You know, you gave me my life back. You gave me hope. And uh, so I was like, all right, I'm on a mission. I got to study everything I can get, get my hands on that has to do with diet, lifestyle, nutrition, body health. And so um, I was kind of 
pushed by my chiropractor to go to chiropractic school. And I, I went to Iowa and studied at Palmer. And, and that was great. But, you know, they're musculoskeletal oriented. I, again, I wanted the whole picture. So I went on to functional medicine and started learning there. And um, using the kinesiology in my practice, I had pretty much an instant practice. And, and at the end of my career, toward the end of my career, I had a waiting list of over a year. I was practicing in New Mexico for uh, 32 years uh, eventually. But at a certain point, I said, there's something missing. You know, um, several things led to me to this conclusion. One was my own health. Uh, I was struggling with depression my entire life and chronic fatigue syndrome. I couldn't seem to really get my energy up. I could muddle through and, you know, and nobody really knew that I was struggling with that because you just sort of get up and do what you got to do. And, but it was always there and it kind of bothered me because I had all these tools in my bag and I knew how to fix pretty much anything on anyone, but I couldn't fix myself. And then there were certain people too in my practice who didn't respond to anything I did. But a lot of people that responded, you know, really well. And so that confused me. Like, I got all these tools in my bag. I know how to do functional medicine, which I'll define what that is in a second. But, um, <laughs> oh, I, I want you to define all of this stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can back up and you can ask me what the heck is that. But, um, I, you know, I'm like, I have a lot of tools. I do emotional work that's really effective. I do uh, all this biochemical work, this natural healing and I uh, had really good success, like I say, but there were some people that just didn't respond. I'm like, okay, we're missing, we're missing something, you know? Uh, and then another piece of the puzzle I kept thinking about, and maybe you can relate to this, but I had, my dad died of cancer in at 55, he got lung cancer hmm. and he did everything he could to get it. You know, he was like on a mission. I'm going to get, you know, he was a big smoker, drinker, party or never exercised, never ate anything healthy. He wasn't health oriented at all. And he died at 55, but his best friend was doing the same things. He married my mom after my dad died, and he lived another 30 years doing those same things. So the only thing we can say about that is pff, genetics, right? It's got to be. That's, we say that all the time. Oh, it's, he's got good genes. He got away with it, you know? I don't know about that. It's not true, but <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, sure. I thought we were having a disagreement. Uh, no, we, is there a first argument? <laughs> I don't true, yes, it's genes, but also there are mitigate. There's more to the story. So. There you go. I, I'm glad you. I'm glad you circled back on that because. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, because otherwise it sucks to be you. You know, and yeah. like, that's yeah, not. I don't, I don't believe it's all genes. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't believe it's all genes. I, I think. Oh, no, genes no, all- no, no, no. <laughs> You can change the expression of your genes. You may have inherited genes, and I inherited a gene that is high risk for lung cancer should I smoke. It's it's really in, you know, it's a real thing. But I, number one, I don't smoke. But And number two, I know how to modify the expression of that gene, and that's the key. So, yeah. I mean, it'd be one thing if I inherited a gene that, that, that you know, was likely that I would get cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I and then I sent out invitations <laughs> to, 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 to get cancer. Then, exactly. you know, I mean, I think that that's kind of what where I'm going with that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And that's what we call epigenetics. And it's it's the, you know, changing the expression of the genes. So I want to talk a lot about that during this um, conversation with you, Kevin. But um, so I started to hear this word methylation. And, you know, when before we got on, we were talking about, you know, methylation. What the heck is that? Yeah. Um, and I was like, what is that? You know, I, he- I keep hearing that word, methylation, and this MTHFR gene, the mother flipper gene. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm cleaning up my act here. No, nah, I think it's, uh, I, I mean, you, the, letter, <laughs> the letter's matched up. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's, uh, I was like, what is, what is this methylation thing? And so I kind of did a deep dive and I scoured the internet and I found this guy named Richemann Koninenberg, and he was doing this lecture in Sweden somewhere on methylation. And he was looking at genetic variants, uh, you know, inherited gene, not mutations, but uh, variations that can affect your ability to methylate. And methylate, is, a methyl group is like a carbon and three hydrogen molecules. It's a little chemical uh, structural thing. It goes around in the body and it does certain things. It turns genes on and turns them off. 
It repairs RNA and DNA. So if you're not methylating, you're not going to repair your DNA. And so you're highly susceptible to cancer if that's happening. If you have a genetic variant in these uh, methylation pathways, and the best known one is that MTHFR, its job is to turn folic acid into methyl folate. It's, it activates folic acid. And so if you cannot do that, then you're highly susceptible to certain cancers and heart disease and um, you know, a, a ton of stuff that, that you can't, you don't detox well, highly susceptible to vaccine damage. Um, a, a lot of, a lot of bad things can happen if you can't methylate correctly. Um, and so I started to go, well, that's interesting. So how do we, how do we use kinesiology to maybe test for that? Before I go further, uh, go ahead and ask your questions because I don't, I don't want people to be sort of lost at this point. So well, what exactly is kinesiology? I mean, okay. the, Start there. The, the very definition of it. Yeah. Well, kinesiology is the study of muscles and motion. If you look it up, that's what you're going to get. But applied kinesiology is, the, is a clinical science, and it's about muscle testing. So it's using, using your body for feedback. So if I put something next to you that is beneficial to you, your body stays strong. If I put something next to you that's adverse, every muscle in your body goes weak. It's sort of a reflex. It's like your body's going, ah, get that away from me. It's in our field. Uh, you know, we're, we're an electrical system. We're, uh, you know, we conduct electricity. Anytime you conduct electricity, you create an electromagnetic field around that. System. So like two magnets going together. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So anything that comes into your field that is positive, actually, you can do this. It's pretty cool. You can put stuff next to you, like let's say a supplement. You can put it next to you, close your eyes. And if you go toward it, you know that your body's going, yeah, give me. If you're going away from it, your body's saying, get it, get it off me. You know, it's, it's fascinating. You should try it because it's. My wife does that to me all the does time. She? <laughs> yeah. So she, um, she it's a little. <laughs> get away. <laughs> but um, it's a very cool science. It's a, it's a diagnostic tool for asking the body questions. You know, is this thing good for me or bad for me? And so it's, it really individualizes medicine. Okay. So you can literally ask the body, is, are bananas good for me or are they bad for me? Or, you know, is this supplement good for me? Is it bad for me? Is, you know, swimming good for me, bad for me? There's lots, just a huge variety of things you can ask the body through the nervous system using applied kinesiology. So it's very, it's a very cool technique. Okay. So um, how does that coincide with methylation? Good question. That's a really good question. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> so let's take that MTHFR example that we were just talking about. Now that is an enzyme. Um, it stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. I know that's a mouthful, but you hear that ASE ending. Uh, that indicates that it's an enzyme. Its job is to turn folic acid into methylfolate. Uh, enzymes have this, they have jobs in the body. They're going to turn one thing into another. Uh, enzymes that, digestive enzymes, for instance, are going to break down your food and turn it into energy or turn it into smaller molecules, right? You got the concept of enzyme. Yeah. Okay. So if you inherited a genetic variant, um, you know, you got one set of genes from mom, one set of genes from dad, and they are a code. So they tell your body how to make these enzymes. So you got a code from your parents that tell your body how to make that MTHFR enzyme. If it's a variation from the normal code or the wrong code from one parent, that's what we call a heterozygous variant. And it's going to slow down that enzyme's function. Not both to be confused with homozygous. Homozygous is both genes. Yes. Heter heterozygous is one gene is a variant. Homozygous is both genes. That reduces that enzyme's ability to function by about 70%. That's a big hit. So now you've reduced your ability to methylate by about 70% and you've increased your risk of these things that I was talking about, you know, the, the inability to repair DNA, uh, the inability to detox the body correctly, the inability to prevent birth defects. And we know about folic acid, right? That women take it to avoid, you know, spina bifida or, or other birth defects. That's why we're told, you know, when we're pregnant, oh, take your folic acid because, We've known for a long time that it prevents birth defects, but 
if you have a genetic variant there, then you can't even use regular folic acid. You can't can't convert it well into methylfolate, which is the active form. And that's where, you know, the methylfolate is the important molecule. So what do we do? Sucks to be you? (laughs) Yeah, well, there's always an answer. (laughs) So enzymes. Enzymes always have something called a cofactor or a coenzyme that make it work better. They speed up its ability to function correctly. So... It turns out that the MTHFR's cofactor is riboflavin. It's an it's a vitamin. So if you have that genetic variant, instead of and a lot of people are like, oh, I just give methylfolate. I'm like, ah, oh, don't do that because it's it's a long story, but you're going to create a lot more problems down the line. But if you give the cofactor, then you kind of make up for the fact that you inherited this homozygous variant. You speed up that enzyme. So this person is going to need a higher than normal level of riboflavin. Make sense? The inherited okay. heterozygous. Homozygous. Homo, so both. Yeah. I mean, the heterozygous, yeah, some. It only reduces at about, about 30%. So it's not as big of a hit as it is a homozygous variant. So that's a 70% reduction. So it, that person is going to need more riboflavin in their diet. Now imagine they have another genetic variant where they can't absorb riboflavin. Well, uh-oh, that sucks. <laughs> Now, well, how do you determine the, the deficiency? Genetic testing, yeah. Or, or, sorry, oh, yeah, back to your question, because that's where we started. Imagine a person, so we're testing them. I put folic acid on their body, and their body goes, ah, get it off. It goes weak. That tells me that their body can't process folic acid. It's like, no, 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 no. If I put folic acid on there, and I put riboflavin with it, and their body goes, yeah, now I can that's the cofactor I needed to really turn that folic acid into methylfolate. Follow yeah. me? Yes. Absolutely. So the muscle testing really tells us, it shows us right where the problem is, you know, right, right before that enzyme and its, its function. Um, if, if the body goes weak on that substrate, then it's going to show us where the block is or where the, uh, you know, the, what do you call it? The funnel, you know, blockade or whatever. The slow traffic happens. So we have a buildup of folic acid and a, and a slowdown of methylfolate. So I have been looking into this genetic testing that you're speaking of. Just coincidentally, like I've been leading up to – had nothing to do with this interview. Um, it, but this genetic testing um, isn't it commonly used like with, with – uh, uh, morbid uh, morbidity experts and and uh, don't they find out what your deficiency is so they could tell how long you're going to live for <laughs> I mean isn't it kind of like like insurance like morbidity experts uh, don't they predict <laughs> the your the longevity of your life based on these genetic tests <laughs> wow uh, much as, I mean, I mean, I'm just I'm asking because I'm kind of curious about um, that's that's a little scary, but you can't tell. I mean, there because there are so many things that modify these risks. You can look at you can do um, epigenetic testing and test for your methylation patterns and see where your telomere length is. And that can kind of predict, you know, what, what your biological age is, essentially. So yeah. I just did one, and I'm like 10 years younger than my physical age. My biological age is 10 years younger. So my telomere length, the telomeres are the little tails on your chromosomes that get shorter and shorter when you age. You know, the more reactive oxygen species or free radicals you're exposed to, the shorter your telomere is going to get. And so they can sort of see, oh, look, you're aging faster than you should. But to predict, you know, that you're going to die at a certain age? No, not really. There's, um, there's really no way to tell that because there are so many factors involved. It's not just genes, you know. It's, oh, yeah. It's I mean, your yeah. diet, your lifestyle, your stress levels, the fact that you're in the middle of the road when a bus comes along. So, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that, that would have a heavy impact. <laughs> um, biochemistry. Biochemistry. I love it. About biochemistry, Doc. Well, so biochemistry, I hated it. I really hated it in school. It was terrible because it was so dry. And, you know, like these pathways are going this way and this pathway is going this way and this causes this and this turns into this. And it was just like, oh, it was excruciating 
to get through. And I actually failed chemistry twice before I became a doctor. And I realized well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for you listeners out there, you too can become a doctor. <laughs> you just don't, don't let that discourage you. <laughs> don't let it discourage you. No, so, um, but now that I know how it works in the body, I love biochemistry because hey, it's. Michael Jordan got cut from a high school basketball team. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, don't be so hard on yourself, Doc. No, so, <laughs> so, okay, so now you understand how biochemistry works. Can yeah. you try to help me understand? Yes, and I just did. You just got a lesson in biochemistry, understanding that folic acid is made into methylfolate. That's biochemistry. Yeah, so this is uh, this is um, the totality of it is pretty much uh, what you specialize in. Yes, and you know it's different. A lot of people do genetic testing. There are a lot of companies out there now. You know, you got the twenty three Me's and the Ancestries, and look, they're looking at like where did you where did you come from or where are your ancestors from. I'm looking at what genetic variants did you inherit that are going to inhibit you from being as healthy and strong and vital as you can be? Do you have genetic variants in your ability to detox, let's say heavy metals or chemicals or pesticides? That's not a good thing because that will age you faster. And if you do, what nutrients do you need to upregulate that pathway and make up for those genetic variants? So let me tell you where my story started. Um, with the genetics. So again, back to... Yeah, please uh, rewind. Sorry. I just had to get the definitions out of the way. No, no, that's good because we need we need those. I don't want to lose people as far as... I'm yeah, so, I mean, and, and I set the bar low. So if I understand it, the audience will definitely understand it. So. so I got my genes tested through 23andMe and I put them through a, a template. Well, there's a, a software program online that you can put them through, and it, it pulled out about 30 genes. And this is my first, you know, experience with this whole concept. And one of the, and I, I saw that I was homozygous for a gene called the vitamin D receptor, and that's how vitamin D, you know, uh, were absor is absorbed in the body, right? I'm homozygous for the vitamin D receptor, which means that I can't absorb vitamin D. And I went, wow. That's really interesting. That makes sense to me because whenever I got my vitamin D levels tested, they were always really low. No matter how much sun I got, no matter how much vitamin D I took, I could not get my vitamin D levels up. And so really I was everybody on. deficient in vitamin D, like pretty much everybody it's in the pretty, world. So. Pretty, but some people, uh, yeah, it's pretty common, but some people can absorb it better than others. And so, so uh, for those people that can absorb it, should they take something like uh, magnesium or something like that to help? No, them? I'll tell you. I'll tell you the secret. Hang oh. on, because it's back what? to biochemistry. I feel like I'm on the inside right now. I know. Like, like I, I behind the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Come on, okay, come on, go. okay, so the go. plot thickens. Go. So go. I'm, like, minute, I'm gonna do a deep dive into what is this vitamin D receptor? Is there are there studies? And if so, what are the what kind of risks do I have when I have inherited this? gene, right? And so one of the first studies I found was you have a high risk of lung cancer when you smoke. And I went, oh, there's dad. Uh, second thing I found is that uh, when you can't absorb vitamin D, you can't make dopamine and serotonin. Those are our main neurotransmitters that create good mood. And I went, aha, there's my depression. Third thing I found was that Without vitamin D, you can't activate your immune system to fight infections. And I went, well, there's my chronic fatigue syndrome. The Epstein-Barr virus is always super high. And I went, this makes sense to me. This all explains these things that I've never been able to get on top of. So, all right, sucks to be me. Or can Solution. we? <laughs> what? Solution. What's the... <laughs> okay, here it comes. Hang in there. You're on the edge of your seat. I, like, I want to get to the back of the book. Like, okay. I want to go right to the end. So, come on. I'm, like, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, it's supposed to be you. You can't absorb it. Yeah. So, um, I'm like, what the heck? So, with muscle testing, I would put, you know, somebody put vitamin D on me and test me, and it would go weak. Makes sense, right? My body can't use vitamin D. It's like, get it off. I can't do anything with it. I'm like, okay. What are the cofactors? Now we know the cofactors for MPHFR. Is, are there cofactors for this vitamin D receptor? And so I did a deep dive into the literature and I found it. Um, and it's vitamin K2, which comes from natto. It's interesting that you mentioned natto. One of the highest sources of K2 is natto. 
and uh, A. Those are the two cofactors that when you take them, open up that receptor so now D can get in. So imagine that receptor is like this, K2 and A on board, boom, D gets in. Now everything turns on and my brain started to make serotonin and dopamine and I went, wow, I think this is happy. I, I've never really, I've heard about it. I had never felt it because wow. my brain could not make those neurotransmitters genetically. So, so I take a supplement called, uh, it's made with Dr. Berg's D3 K2. Okay, cool. Get that. some A in there too because you need the A. That's the other Okay, code. so, so a, a vitamin A um, contribution would do what? Uh, it opens up the receptor. So you have to have, it's, that receptor has two sides to it, vitamin D and A. Okay. So it's, it's what they call a heterodimer. Uh, so you have to have both. So you only, if you only open up half that receptor, it doesn't do much. Okay. So, so, so is, it up all the way. is the magnesium not necessary to absorb? Sure. The magnesium's, yeah, sure. The magnesium is always important. I mean, we're all pretty much deficient in that for the most part, but it isn't the secret. It's not the key. Oh. It's not going to do it by itself. See, I really kind of thought that I knew something that I didn't know. I know. Well, here's, <laughs> the problem. here's the problem, Kevin. And this is where biochemistry comes in. So now... And this is going to feed back to the warrior thing. We're going to get there in a second. Uh, so, so now your body's making, you've turned on that receptor. Your body is absorbing vitamin D and you're making uh, dopamine. You're making norepinephrine and you're making adrenaline. They're, they just are made into each other. Dopamine is made into noradrenaline. And that's made into adrenaline. You know what adrenaline is, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's our fight or flight hormone. That's, you know, what our adrenals make. Um, rage. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's more like anxiety it's more like ooh, go ooh, you know fight or flight it also makes serotonin and too much serotonin is rage and that's where the mao gene the warrior gene comes in so imagine this downstream so you've turned on that vitamin d receptor now you're making more adrenaline and you're making more serotonin if you have a genetic variant in the mao or the warrior gene or the comp gene that breaks down adrenaline, then you're going to send yourself into, what do you think? If you have too much adrenaline and too much serotonin, what do you think is going to happen? Too much adrenaline and too much serotonin? Yeah. Uh, uh, Anxiety, distress. Yeah, like I, I, I would, it kind of reminds me of uh, being on meth. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> being, being, being on meth. I don't know. Like Exactly. So, so that's why you have to look at all the genes down the line. So you just turn something on. Do you know what happens down the line? And that's what our company does is we look at wh what other genes do you have and how do we balance the whole pathway? How do we get the whole thing going so that when I fire up your adrenals, I don't send you into anxiety and ADD and, and this rage because we don't know what's happening downstream. And that's the problem with a lot of companies is they're saying this gene, take this supplement. And I know a lot of people that are listening are going to go, I'm going to go out and get some K2 and A. Ooh, caution. You know, if you start to feel a lot of anxiety, if you can't sleep anymore, if you're starting to feel a little rage, you know, you have a gene down below. And you need to balance that too. And so that's what our, like I say, we're looking at the whole picture, yeah. what happens uh, downstream. So yeah, the MAO gene is fascinating. It's the monoamine oxidase and that's the warrior gene. So if you have that genetic variant, it's, it's not a mistake. These aren't mutations. These are variations. So imagine, so the warrior is somebody who's makes a really good soldier who's going to go out and fight and be aggressive and win. And, you know, uh, that's great on the battlefield. It's not so good in a marriage. It's not so good in a society where that's not valued. So that gene has a cofactor as well. So we look at, you know, when we dial in the nutrients for a person, we're looking at all of those variants. Okay, so here's your, you can't just go out and take a multiple vitamin because you're going to fire up things you shouldn't. And you're not going to fire up things you should in a different way. And so we create this multiple designed around your genetics that optimizes all of these things. So you've got the VDR, we give you ADK. If you've got the MAO, we give you the nutrient for that. If you've got that MTHFR, we give you the riboflavin. You know, we, we look at 
exactly for you. We designed the multiple exactly for your genes. And so that's the difference between our company and a lot of companies who are looking at, oh, you just have the comp gene, take this. Uh-huh. You have the amino gene, take that. You know, it's, it's very short-sighted and very irresponsible. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I actually, <laughs> this, you, you know, I'm, a, I got, I'm just total, total, just transparency. <laughs> I'm, I, I got to do a deep dive into this MAO gene now. I, I'm, yeah. and I'm going to become obsessed with understanding this MAO gene because yeah. I preach being a warrior every single day. And, and, uh, and I think especially those with the cancer that, that are in the battle and they're, they're fighting. I think that some of them need a shot of the MAO gene. You know, some people need a shot right in the, right in the face of the MAO gene. You know, so it seems, I mean, I think that, um, you know, to, to throw energy into this battle is a, a great, um, it, it, it kind of gives you an edge. Um, I, 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 well, Believe yes that. and no. You know, so the VDR would be better, your better bet for understanding because it is highly involved with cancers. You have a really, uh, the VDR gene, high risk of not just lung cancers, but colon cancers, breast cancers. You said uh, v- VDR gene? Yeah, the vitamin D receptor that I was Okay, saying. okay. Um, highly associated with all kinds of cancers. And uh, with autoimmune diseases. So it's a, it's a nasty. So it's definitely, you know, the things you mentioned, the, um, the NATO and, but here's, here's a problem though. You, you mentioned the turmeric. It's going to make the MAO gene worse. It's going to make you more aggressive and more irritable because it's a MAO inhibitor. It slows down the MAO gene. So if you have that genetic variant, it's not a good idea to take turmeric. So the sobitidine. Uh, no, that's no. no that's I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, the curcumin. Is yeah, what, the curcumin. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, and if there are parasites, the other gene is the nitric oxide synthase gene because our body makes um, nitric oxide, which breaks down to superoxide and peroxynitrite, and those are directly antimicrobial. They will fight parasites directly. They will kill them. So if you have genetic variants in the nitric oxide synthase pathway, you won't be able to fight those infections. And I very much agree with you about uh, the presence of parasites a lot of times, especially colon cancer. I've never seen a case of colon cancer where there weren't parasites there. So if you fire up nitric oxide production, and nitric oxide has a lot of other benefits too. For men, it's erectile function, it's circulation, it's cardiovascular, it's blood drops blood pressure. Lots of really good benefits from nitric oxide. And beets are, are a great source of, of getting nitric oxide. That's an easy way to add, add more support for those pathways. But if you have genetic variants there, then we look at, okay, you're not going to be fighting parasites. And you're at high risk of, of cancers and cardiovascular disease and erectile dysfunction and strokes. Um, so those are the, you know, these are the, the highlights of some of the genes that we look at that can really help us fight cancer. And we've had some incredible success with it. Um, ovarian cancer, I've seen it go away, no chemo, no radiation. Um, I've seen a brain tumor go away, no chemo, no radiation. Through breast through, cancer. All these things are disappearing through the, the genetic work that you're doing right. or as a result of the genetic testing that you're doing. Right. And now, and don't mistake me. I'm not saying this is the only thing you should do and you shouldn't do any of these other things. Um, It's all a personal choice, but I have seen these things happen with, with patients who are like, I'm never doing chemo, never doing radiation. What do you got? You know? And so they were the great test subjects because I like, all right, you know, I'm your last hope. Let's do this thing. And it it makes sense when you understand the biochemistry of what's going on. And, And a big piece of cancer is the mitochondrial health. And that is, there's a lot of science behind understanding uh, the mitochondrial, uh, you know, kind of component of cancers. It's it's huge. There's well, a let's great talk about that for a second. Mitochondria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mitochondria. Um, um, mitochondria. So mitochondria. So in the cell, there are all these little organelles, tiny organs inside every cell. One of them is called mitochondria, and its its job is to turn your food into energy. That's the Cliff Notes. It is bacterial in origin. It's, uh, you know, the theory is that many millions of years ago, 
a bacteria was engulfed by a cell and they set up this little agreement. They had a little handshake and said, hey, uh, you give me a nice place to live. Feed me. I'll make energy for you. And the cell was like, yeah, sure. This, yeah, let's do this. So, <laughs> so I just envision like a cartoon. Um, I know. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're living together and this mitochondria is like, hey, but now we need somebody to take out the trash. And that's the, I think it's the ribosomes that take out the trash. Anyway, the, all these organelles have different functions in the body, right? And so um, the mitochondria is where we produce energy. And so it's ATP. That's our basic unit of en energy, adenosine triphosphate. And it goes around and gives all of these enzymes that we've been talking about energy. Without ATP, they don't have any energy. And now that function is even lower than it was you know, because you inherited a genetic variant. But there are genetic variants in the mitochondrial pathway that also slow things down. And let me show you, let me tell you the origin of that. We look at, you know, where do these genes come from? Where do we, where do we think like our ancestors experienced something that made it optimal for them to have this gene? And the warrior gene, we know, you know, this is like the people that won the wars, they got to pass on their genes. Right. They're, you know, the guys that lost, they're dead. They're not going to reproduce. So uh, Genghis Khan, for instance, I think like 80 percent of Mongolians are related to Genghis Khan. I mean, he, he kind of had his way with the women. Right. But so the warrior gene is inherited because, you know, winning the wars is advantageous for our genes. The um, the mitochondria. So certain genetic variants will slow down your metabolism and preserve calories. So during times of starvation, like, you know, the potato famine in Ireland, let's see, um, those people that could slow down their metabolism, hold on to weight, were the ones that survived. The skinny people were dead. They're gone. So the people that reproduce are the people that can hold on to weight, which is not very cool when you have a lot of calories available today. So there are certain genetic variants in that pathway that'll cause you to hold on to weight and be tired and just have a, a much lower metabolism. You're so, right. so the, speaking of metabolism, the what is your, what would you, what would your opinion on uh, the metabolic theory of cancer be? Yeah, hundred percent. I'm totally in agreement with that. So, look at this. I'm going to describe this pathway to you. So it's called um, glycolysis. Right. We take glucose. We make it into pyruvate. We make that into acetylcholine. Da 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 down the line until it makes ATP. So it's a lot of pathways. It's a lot of enzymes going down that. that. Is this the, the Warburg effect? Is that weird? Yeah, I'm getting to that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, if you have a genetic variant sort of at the bottom where the mitochondria is, where the electron transport chain is, or the Krebs cycle, this is where it all happens at the cellular level. Everything above there is backed up because it's like traffic. You got an eight lane highway coming into a bottleneck of traffic down here because there is a genetic variant at the bottom. Everything backs up. So glucose is going to go high. We know that glucose feeds cancer, right? That's pretty standard knowledge. Um, and lack of ATP, lack of proper ATP creates reactive oxygen species. And those are free radicals. That is highly associated with cancer as well. So this is the Warburg principle that it all comes from mitochondrial dysfunction and mito now back to sorry am i going too too far too fast no 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 go you're right back, back to the bacterial origin of mitochondria there you go how susceptible do you think a bacteria is when you take an antibiotic when you take an antibiotic you've just killed your mitochondria yeah. It is bacterial in origin and function. So every time you take an antibiotic, you're killing off mitochondria and you're increasing your odds of cancer. You're also increasing your, or decreasing your metabolism. So there's going to be more weight gain, more fatigue, you know, lower energy. And that's, that's a pretty common thing. Um, and in cancers too, you know, that's one of the first things they talk about is like my energy is just like. Ugh. But what about, what about when you take an antiparasitic? It, does that kill your mitochondria? No, not so much, but there, there are all kinds of drugs that damage the mitochondria, all kinds of them, including like a statin, um, okay. uh, anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen can do it. 
Um, why, why, why are statins? Why do statins exist? I, I mean, I, I get the cholesterol connection or whatever, but I mean, I also get the connection. There's more of a connection between dementia and Alzheimer's and, and all that stuff with statins. Right. And there is, you know, it, your, your body makes cholesterol. Why would you suppress that? <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, Bill, to me. It really is. If you don't understand the body and the way it works, it, it doesn't make any sense to shut down an enzyme that should be, you know, allowed to do what it's supposed to do. But if, if cholesterol is building up, it's a sign that your biochemistry is off and that you have a, a, you know, a bottleneck at the bottom there. So that same pathway that increases glucose also increases cholesterol. So if you're seeing cholesterol go up and your blood sugar going crazy and you're becoming what's called insulin resistant, uh, the chances of you feeding cancer are very high. The, the chances of you getting heart disease are very high. It means you've got mitochondrial dysfunction. We should be going like, boo, boo, you know, we've got a problem here. Um, and so when we look at mitochondrial function, it's not just genetic variants, it's diet, it's lifestyle, it's uh, exposure to chemicals, pesticides, um, glyphosate, uh, damage mitochondria like crazy. And that's for, me, was, for me, it was gluttony. <laughs> I just say <laughs> gluttony. Gluttony was a big thing for me. I just I couldn't push away. Like I just. Well, was, but the, here's the thing, Kevin, that usually means your mitochondria is off. Oh, yeah. No, I was all off. I was all I mean, I'm pretty well on now. I'm just saying. But I, I think that, you know, like we were talked about before, you have your genetic dispositions. But then they're sending invitations out, inviting cancer into your life, you know, and I feel like I did a lot of that. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. This is the cool thing. And it's a really, it's a paradigm shift. And I want you to kind of see if you can grasp this. If you are craving sugar, it means that your cells don't have fuel. They don't have sugar. They don't, aren't making ATP. That's a big sign of mitochondrial dysfunction. It doesn't mean you're weak willed. It means there's something off. So and what do you, you when you get it balanced, when you get your mitochondrial balanced, you lose your taste for sugar. You lose your cravings. When you get the brain to make dopamine, you lose your cravings. You lose your cravings for methamphetamines, and I've seen that happen. You lose your cravings for um, cocaine or alcohol. All of those things we're doing, people are doing are self-medicating. It's a sign that your biochemistry is off. Does, can you get that? It's yeah, like, absolutely. Now, how do you, how do you balance your mitochondria? Uh, that's, it just depends on where the problem is, you know? So there isn't like one size fits all with that. We look at, do you have a genetic variant in the NDF, NDUFS, the N, I call it the NDUFS gene. Um, that is how we bring carnitine into the cell to burn fat as a fuel. If you've got a genetic variant there, it's going to take a certain type of nutrient. If you have a genetic variant in the MMAB or the MUT gene, then it's B12, uh, adenosyl B12, not, uh, not hydroxy or methyl B12. It's a very specific type of B12. If it's further down into the what they call the electron transport chain, where, where the rubber meets the road as far as energy production, those are different nutrients there. So I can't say it's one thing or one product. It's going to be individual uh, according to your genetics and where the problem is actually happening. So uh, after you do this genetic testing, um, is there, you know, I, I say a lot to, to people, you know, what do you, what's it worth to you? You know, what, it, what, what are you willing to sacrifice to get right? You know, so, so for me, I love dessert. I love dessert and, you know, I love sugar. I'm a big sugar guy. I'm a foodie. Well, that's what well, I'm saying is it's like that means your mitochondria isn't fixed yeah. yet. Well, when, when they told me that I wasn't going to live very long, what are you willing to sacrifice? Well, and sure, yeah. That's willpower. That, yeah. yeah. Sure. So, so, so the, I, I'm, I'm guessing that when you – do your genetic testing and you get the results that uh, the lifestyle and the moderation change and the, 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 the shift as you, you know, whatever processed foods or gluttony that you had, you know, I, I feel like somebody could go through all the genetic testing and, and, and have built a great relationship with you in a professional way and, and then not follow through with what your advice is. And it's all for nothing. 
No, well, so that's what I'm trying to say is that, you know, here, here I'm a healthcare provider. Right? I've been doing this for 35 years. I know people won't follow my directions. It's a, <laughs> what? I gave up after a while. Like, do you know sugar's bad for you? Yeah. You going to quit eating it? Oh, sure. For a week. Yeah. You know, they don't. They just don't. And I started to go, why not? And there was a case. This is when I started to go, ah, something else is happening here. She, I, this woman came in from New York and she weighed over 300 pounds. She'd fly into New Mexico to see me. She had to buy two seats because she was so big, you know. And, and wow. so it's pretty obvious that she's eating too much. You know, it's, there's no secret here. <laughs> you know, there's no hiding this. And I had talked to her before about her diet. And she's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I think I'm eating pretty well. I'm like, yeah, it's, sure. <laughs> yeah, um, well enough. <laughs> and she, I put her on a, a, a supplement program based on her genes. You know, we did the gene testing and we did um, – the evaluation there. And I said, this, these are the supplements for you. And um, she went home and she called me a week later and she's crying. And I said, what's, what's going on? And she said, it wasn't my fault. And I was like, what wasn't your fault? She said, I was eating a bag of Oreos every night before bed. I couldn't contain my cravings. She said, now I don't even want them. It doesn't even sound good to me. And I went, oh, that's that's the secret, because I've been beating my head against the wall trying to tell people to eat right. If we get their biochemistry right, they do it naturally. They will follow my advice. They go, yeah, it's easy. I don't even sound good anymore. Don't, I, you should have started with that. I know. Well, started, listen, if you do, if you let me get your biochemistry right, you won't have problems being disciplined. Is that pretty much what I'm hearing? That's exactly what it was. And. And that, like I say, that oh. was what happened with methamphetamines. I had this patient come in. She God, was in oh my mind. That is so simplistic. <laughs> that, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, like I, somebody said to me the other day, they said, you know what? Not all of us were, were a, a Marine. Not all of us, you know, are in the same place as you. Not all of us it, it had, you know, Have that we're, not all, we're not all you do. Okay. And understanding people are sick. They're deflated. They're defeated. And, right. and I get it. I get it. And so for me to be a cheerleader, sometimes people don't want to hear that shit. I know that's yeah. what I'm talking about, Kevin. It's a very small percentage of people who will get it and take yeah. it. But, but, if we, but if we can change their brain chemistry, they go, yes. I can do yes. it. Yes. Yes. Doc. That's so <laughs> amazing. I'm, I'm in dude. I'm, I'm so in. <laughs> That was because those people are right. Not everybody was a Marine. Not everybody had this yeah. genetic. I mean, my genetic, my genes shifted. I had, I, I went through boot camp, you know, like, so, so like you, you t spoke earlier about changing that. Right. So, yeah. so that was changed inside of me, you know, yeah. so I don't have a flight. There's fight or fight. <laughs> there, there, there is no flight. So you're built for, you know, you're built to be a warrior. And it's yeah, like, this MAO gene is real. So, is. Yes. So, I've got it too, Kevin. And it, I can get pretty dang irritable. I've got a few MAOs. <laughs> you know what? I am. Uh, so, but you know what? I don't always feel right either. You know, like, I, I mean, I, I, I admittedly, you know what? I had a practice wife. I, I, I had I had a first wife, and you know what? I probably had that MAO gene. I would when, bet money when I it. when I wasn't sick. <laughs> you know, I mean, I I, I mean, I've I, I've I've hurt people emotionally, and 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 stuff like that. It, family members or friends or whatever. Like I always wasn't this version of Kevin, right? So maybe maybe that was a thing. And these people are saying, hey, listen, we're not all Marines. We can't fight. Well, maybe that genetic disposition, the genetic testing that you're referring to could make them all Marines. Well, yes. And and balance it out. You know, it, it, there's yeah. there's a point where it's too much. You know, it's like you're irritable. You jump off the you know, you, you lose your temper easily. It could help them become more of a Marine and help me become less of, yes. Yes. Yeah, of an asshole. No. <laughs> so. It's compassion too. It's like, okay, there's a reason why I was that way. It wasn't 
because I was a bad person. It's because my biochemistry is making me irritable. So yeah. one person ticks me off and I escalate, you know. I'm going to tell my mom. <laughs> yeah, thanks, mom. It's my fault. It was my biochemistry that whole time. Yeah. <laughs> my whole time it was my biochemistry. Dr. J said, I'm not an asshole. I swear. Exactly. <laughs> it's my biochemistry. <laughs> and so like for me, I was depressed almost all my life. And I thought it was my fault. I thought, well, why can't I just think positive? Why can't I just be a, a happy person? I, my life isn't that bad. I've had some bad stuff for sure. But why? Why can't I just be happy? And people would say, just smile. It's like, and and it's all about the genetic testing, what you're yeah. deficient in, and so then you I, correct that. Yes. Yeah. When I corrected my VDR, it was like happy. Now that's where I live now is in Happyville. Uh, I don't have to work at it anymore. It's you don't have to take you don't have to take drugs. You don't have to take I don't have to be doped up with Xanax to be No. Uh, if you understand what's happening with the biochemistry, and it gave me a lot of compassion. It wasn't my fault that it was genetic, that there's an answer for it. There's hope that um, I don't have to live in that place. Of, uh, of this is so awesome, Doctor J. Hey, listen, what, where do where do we find you? Where where do where do we get this done? How, how, explain to me how this works. If I want, if, okay. if I want this, right? Like because yeah. I'm wanting this. <laughs> so. Um, so my happy genes uh, dot com, all one word, is the name of the website where you can get. Uh, your genes test. And with that comes the mood and personality report and your, your genetic report, like your gene table, where we show you all the genes you inherited. And um, that's, that comes with it. So it's, it's two ninety five to get those done. I'm, I'm going to give your listeners a $50 off coupon if they want to get that tested. Hey, man. All right. Yeah. So they get $50 off if they tell you that they heard this through beating cancer today. Yeah, and we'll call it Warrior 50. That's their coupon. Warrior 50. Coupon code Warrior 50. I'm loving it, Dr. J. So um, uh, so there's more to the story. Okay, go, 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 go. Four more tests after you get that one done. One of them will tell you your health risks, you know, like what, what diseases or conditions am I at risk for. It doesn't mean you have to get them because we know how to, like, turn those off now. Um, another one is diet and lifestyle. Um, and then there's a supplementation and a biochemistry uh, report. So um, you have to have a, a practitioner. One of our practitioners work with you on the supplementation and three of the reports, because if you're on medication, you know, we don't want to go messing with supplements and it's it's a little bit dangerous. You need to be on, under the care of a physician who knows how to incorporate all of that. Um, but, yeah, you can get the mood and personality and the diet and lifestyle as a consumer. And, but if you want to go further and really get the supplement recommendations, you'll have to work with a practitioner. But we have a lot of them. We have about 500 around the country now. So. Okay. So after after they get this testing through you, yeah. they, they'll, they'll get the testing through you. And then uh, you recommend, uh, based on their location, who it is that you work with. Yeah. And, and, and or telehealth. They can do it telehealth, too. Okay. But not with you. It would be with somebody else. Yeah. It would be with somebody else. Yeah. Okay. That, that you recommend. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. And, and they get that, uh, at, at, uh, uh, my, my happy jeans.com. My happy jeans.com. Yeah. With an S my happy jeans. Yes. Dot com. Okay, cool. All right. Well, um, Hey, listen, I, I, I want to do this with you more times. I mean, I think we, I, I think that we're up, uh, we're out of time right now. But you know what? I think that I, I want to revisit this in the future. This has been. There's so much more I want to dig into. There's so much more to tell you. And um, if you, what would be cool, Kevin, is if we could do your test and then do a live, like a uh, going over, it, showing showing you where you have inherited certain variants. And I'm in. Okay. Sure. Tell me, tell me where to go, what to do. Okay. Um, All right. And, uh, and actually we could actually, I'll, I'll, uh, put it right up here on, on beating cancer today okay. and uh, we could actually, you could explain it all how it is. I mean, this would, this would be pretty cool. if like you're, you're up for that. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I'd love to do that. And I think it'd be a great promotion for what, what it is that, that, um, It'll help certainly explain to people in very lay, lay terms what it is that you do. Yeah. And it's pretty cool to see it. It's a visual thing. And so it, it helps to just see it in action, you know. 
Man, that's awesome. Hey, listen, I, I, um, this is for everybody out there to hear, but I, I was going to tell you also. So I'm doing this proof of life challenge, right? So every morning, you know, a buddy of mine who lives over in your neck of the woods there, over in Boca, um, he, uh, throughout my battle, you know, it, it, my sickest point, this guy, he would call me every day, get me out of bed. He's a lifetime friend. And, um, so I kind of converted that into in my more healthier days. Um, this is now my proof of life challenge. Every morning I sent him like a little video and I said, Hey, I'm up out of bed. You know, this is me, you know, grinding and just something to show him that I'm going to do something to make a difference today. Right. So that's a proof of life challenge. And uh, so that's been on every social media platform and, uh, and also beatingcancertoday.com. And we're on bright, brighteon.com now, rumble.com. So all these different dot coms that are not being censored in social media platforms anymore. So, but you could uh, still see all of our uh, information on, on um, Beating Cancer Today Facebook group page. And that has all, uh, all the supporting documentation for all these episodes also. So we will talk to you guys next week. And uh, thank you for tuning in to Warrior Wednesday.